Good evening, and good evening, and welcome to the land of Kem. My name is Jeffrey Drum, and I am the author of this little novella. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me this evening. Um, I just wanted to make this first video for my YouTube channel and take this opportunity to introduce myself and to give you guys a little bit of an introduction to the book. So some of you may be relatively familiar with some of possibly through my interviews on the Sacred Geometry Decoded YouTube channel. And you may already know that we're going to be discussing the connection between chemistry and the Egyptian pyramids. So the full title of the book is The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptians. And it is a somewhat <laughs> fictional story of a young man's initiation into an ancient society known as the Order of Chem. And the Order of Chem was responsible for the construction and operation of the Egyptian pyramids. And the protagonist of the story, his name is Aquari, and Aquari petitions the Order of Chem for initiation into their sacred mysteries. He is accepted into the fraternity, and he receives his apprenticeship, during which he is instructed in the science of chemistry. And after his apprenticeship, he travels with Brother Julius, the senior member of the fraternity, to Egypt, to receive the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids. And during each degree, he is presented with the true purpose of each Egyptian pyramid and is given a detailed explanation of each structure's function. So for those of you that are interested, um, <laughs> my website is www.thelandofchem.com. And the book is currently available via digital download on the website. And I'm also very excited to finally announce that I do have some paperback copies coming out later this year. It will be a very limited edition, but for those of you that are interested in buying a physical copy of the book, those will be coming out later this year. And I'm very, very excited about how those are coming along so far. Um, so I'll be making a formal announcement when those are available on my social media pages, again, the website, www.thelandofchem.com. The book is currently available for digital download. And you can also follow me on Instagram, at The Land of Chem. Uh, please bear with me. I'm still new to all this social media stuff. So for those of you that are interested in following me, Instagram, The Land of Chem. So the main purpose for this video uh, to just give you a little bit of an introduction to me and uh, you know, a small introduction to the book. Uh, just wanted you guys to get to know me a little bit. Um, so I have to admit that uh, I have a bit of an Indiana Jones complex and The Raiders of the Lost Ark was one of my favorite movies growing up as a kid. And it really sparked my interest in Egypt. And you know, again, I always one day hope to be able to travel there in person and I always aspired to live this life of adventure and suspense and danger and mystery um, <laughs> like Indiana Jones. And uh, so around the year 2012, I started diligently researching the Egyptian pyramids as kind of a serious side hobby. And I really wanted to figure out what they were really used for. Um, again, even as a child, the pharaonic burial theory really never resonated to me, and I knew there was a bigger picture. Um, so again, I started studying the interior configurations of the structures, getting really familiar with the internal components, um, started to learn as much as possible about how these structures were built, and I also started to investigate in regard to the Egyptian pyramids. And there's, there's a lot of different theories out there, and I won't get into much detail on those because I very quickly realized that they were not applicable to what I actually saw in person during my first trip. So the universe works in very, very mysterious ways. And you may hear this as somewhat of a recurring theme in my future videos. Um, but again, I, I all of a sudden got this great opportunity to go to Egypt in 2017. 
and I had been planning this research trip and had a very specific itinerary scheduled. And I reached out to a bunch of my friends to see who was interested in going with me on this crazy ass adventure <laughs> to Egypt. And uh, at the end of the day, only one person showed up with the cash and a passport. And it was my good friend, Bethany. And I just wanted to share this picture with you because <laughs> I absolutely love this picture. And it just, it, it warms my heart every time I look at it. Really indicative of how amazing this trip really was. It was an absolutely life-changing experience, not only for um, you know what we got to see while we were in Egypt, but also because it led me on the path of being here, making this video for you guys this evening, and uh, again, of writing this book. Um, I really do feel like this was my true purpose, and it was because of this trip that I was able to discover that. So um, again, just unbridled enthusiasm, and man, we were super excited. If you can't tell by the look on our faces. Um, so Bethany agreed to go with me on this crazy trip to Egypt so that I could you know, do my research with the condition that I would also go with her to Santorini, Greece the following week. So we went on this week-long expedition through Egypt and then got on a plane and flew to Santorini. And we had one of the most amazing vacations of our lives. So thank you so much, Bethany, for going with me on this crazy adventure. <laughs> and again, it's because of this trip that I'm here today with you guys and uh, ended up writing this book. So like I said, I had a plan for this trip, but our guide had some unexpected surprises in store for us, including a journey to a site called Abu Sir. And you can see in this picture, uh, anytime I'm really, really excited, I always put my hands up in the air. So if you ever see that, you know I'm pretty stoked. So um, we got to Egypt, get to the hotel on our little bus arrives and tour guide said, oh, come on, we're going to, to check out a site. And this was a bit of an unexpected departure. I had no idea where we we're going to get a chance to go here. And it was absolutely because of my experience at Abu Sir that I was put on the path of discovery um, in connecting the relationship between chemistry and the Egyptian pyramids. Um, because it was one of the artifacts at this site that really got my wheels turning and uh, completely changed my understanding of the Egyptian pyramids. Again, I always knew that there was a bigger picture and a greater story to be told, but I had no idea how fascinating it really was until we got to this site. So this is a relatively off the beaten path site in Egypt. However, it is somewhat popular in the Lost Ancient High Technology group. Um, because there are remnants here of some of the stone cutting techniques that were involved. Um, and again, cutting these stones, they have those tubular circular drill holes and um, some of the saw marks on stone is still pretty evident. But uh, our, our tour guide realized that I wasn't too, too interested in all this stuff. And um, he kind of pointed me in direct little pictures of the site so you can uh, get an idea of what it looks like there. And this is that again, famous circular saw um, <laughs> that they imply. So the Egyptians were, of course, master stone cutters. They were master masons. They were masters in multiple disciplines, everything from architecture and engineering, and then into physics and chemistry. So it was no surprise that they were able to cut and move stone. Um, that was child's play to them, uh, particularly in comparison to what was being achieved inside the structures. It is um, beneath the temple and as you can see here, this granite conduit and this granite receptacle or granite collection bowl, um, again, collection for what, right? <laughs> and uh, we'll get into further detail in that in, in later videos. But this granite conduit, black basalt floor of the pyramid's adjacent temple, and whatever was flowing posited into this granite collection bowl. So again, I immediately began to realize that the pharaonic burial theory was not compatible with the artifacts that I was seeing in person. Again, if this was a burial, why was there a collection running from the pyramid into this receptacle? And it also didn't correspond with some of the other theories that I uh, went to Egypt to investigate. So again, it started, started getting my wheels turning in considering the possibility 
of the Egyptian pyramids being designed for some sort of manufacturing process. Again, if they were producing something within the structures, they would have inevitably had to collect it somewhere. And again, that is exactly what you see here in Abu Sir. So another unexpected surprise that our guide had in store for us was a journey inside the Red Pyramid of Dashur. And this is, a, again, a great picture of Bethany and me inside the first chamber of the Red Pyramid. And so as soon as you begin to descend into the northern shaft, which leads into the first chamber, you immediately begin to realize that as soon as you enter that first chamber, you are blasted with an overwhelmingly intense smell of pure chemical ammonia. And the smell of ammonia intensifies as you move from the first chamber into, as you climb the rickety staircase, we were quite sketchy, into the third and final synthesis chamber. I mean, the smell is just overwhelming in that third chamber. And again, you may have heard me mention that the third chamber is the final synthesis chamber. Again, synthesis of what? Uh, again, we'll be getting into more detail on that in later. Detailed explanation of the Red Pyramid in the chapter, The Second Degree of the Land of Chem where query is introduced to the true purpose for the Red Pyramid. So you can also see here in this picture, um, so you're not only hit with that intense smell of chemical ammonia, but you can also see the chemical staining all over the walls of the chamber inside this structure. Staining within the chamber occurs in a very specific pattern. And the pattern of the staining is an indication of the flow dynamics that were involved in the structure's operation. So the pyramids of Egypt were designed to operate in conjunction with the annual inundation of the Nile River, the Nile River flooding. So the river would flood, the water was channeled through the causeways into the reservoirs that surrounded these structures, and it was utilized within the chambers not only as a mechanism of the structure's operation to produce the chemical reactions, but also as an initial reactant in the chemical reaction series. Uh, so you can, and you can see here in this next picture uh, more clearly chamber. And in this second chamber, you can see that the staining pattern emanates from the connecting shaft that leads from the first chamber into the second chamber. And it moves up the wall into the upper vault section of the chamber. And you'll notice a very specific transition between the runny staining and this dark nebulous staining in the upper portion of the chamber. And there's a very specific reason for that. And I'll go into further detail when I make a video about the second degree and the true purpose of the Red Pyramid um, coming up here soon. And in this next series of pictures, um, this picture on the left, is of the third and final synthesis chamber. Again, the intense smell of chemical ammonia in this chamber is absent as you enter the chamber. And again, the staining is evident, uh, particularly in the upper vault section of this chamber. And I really love this old picture of the red pyramid here on the right, because again, you can see that flow pattern as the staining moves from the upper vault section of the chamber down the wall of the chamber and through the connecting shaft into the second chamber. And again, that's, a, that's an indication of the flow dynamics that were involved in the structure's operation as gases moved from the upper vault of the first chamber into the second chamber. <laughs> again, I just wanted to share another great vacation photo from Egypt again. And you see me and I have my hands up in the air. It means I'm really, really excited. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we got this camel ride from the Giza pyramids over towards the Sphinx. And of course, everyone takes the traditional vacation photo where you're holding the top of the pyramid. The camel guy was like, hey, can you stand up on the camel? <laughs> I was like, man, what, what the hell are you talking about? He's like, no, no, it's good, my friend. The camel won't move. So I grabbed the the, <laughs> the saddle of the camel and, uh, you know, gradually stood up and threw my hands up in the air. I was, I was pumped. Um, but again, I just wanted to share this. Again, one of the greatest vacation photos that I have from the trip. 
So long story short, um, the main purpose of this video was just as an introduction to the book and an introduction to myself. Uh, thank you so much for, for hanging in here with me. This is the video I'm making for my YouTube channel. I, I really, really appreciate your support. Uh, for those of you that have been following the, on the Sacred Geometry Decoded YouTube channel, and I just really appreciate it. I love the interaction. Again, I, I really appreciate all the support and encouragement. And so again, there are some very scientific theories contained within this book. And there's a detailed explanation of the function of the step pyramid, the red pyramid, the bent pyramid, the Giza pyramids, and the structures, the ancient uh, stone and earth mound structures of Ireland. And again, I wanted to paint the bigger picture of the story of these, these structures and their true purpose. Um, there is a great quote by Rudyard Kipling that says, if history were told in the form of stories, then it would never be forgotten. And that was my intention in writing this book, again, was to paint the bigger picture and, and to try to do justice by these ancient structures. Um, so again, those of you that are interested, uh, my website is www.thelandofchem.com. Um, again, the book is available for a download on the website. We'll have some physical copies coming out later this year, and I'll make a formal announcement about that on my social media page. And you can also follow me on Instagram <laughs> at the land of Kem dot, or land of Kem. So thank you so much. Uh, and it mean, this means the world to me. And it was because of my experience in Egypt that I decided to write this book and that brought me here uh, with you this evening. So thank you so much for tuning in and uh, I will see you on the next one. <laughs> thank you.